for my part, I just wanted to share a word of gratitude for the vision. Uh, in the film, it was soft and engaging. And at times I was terrified for Francine uh, because of the turn that many films take when there is a protagonist that is that soft. And so the music would get a little ominous and I would think, oh my God, what's gonna happen to her? So uh, I'm very thankful to the creation team, to you as the editor and to Charles Officer for keeping it as soft as it was, even though the topic, the, the theme of it actually wasn't anything soft at all. I would also like to thank you, Andres, and the creation team for the look of the film because the grit of it wasn't in plot twists and drama. It was actually in uh, certain aspects of despair of the disrepair of the home or of the frizz in the hair if uh, anyone like me understands black hair and the suitcases up to the ceiling the things that are very familiar in maybe Caribbean or uh, immigrant Canadian life, all of those things speaking to maybe packed up dreams like the, like the speakers in the garage of Francine's father. So my question, my first question is for you, Andres, how familiar were you with that kind of aesthetic before you worked on this film? Yeah, I just wanna say that I was, I was born in, in South America, so I, I come from a completely different culture that, you know, I, um, that, uh, that Canada, you know, uh, when, when I first came here, but I, I, I was able to get inspired through Charles, you know, um, and, and by having, you know, uh, look at uh, the raw material together and by having conversations with, with him, as he started the process uh, before he even started shooting, because we were collaborating in other films. So for me, is it is 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 more of the of the all the conversations that and 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 the work that we did leading up to the moment of of start looking at the material and really um, paying attention to all the details, you know, that uh, he was capturing and and. And for me, it was it, it was very it was very um, powerful to 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 work with that material and to get familiarized with that and to start shaping the the narrative of this film with him. Thank you, QX. This question is for you. How did the participants feel about being so vulnerable? aesthetically and personally, because there were so many things that were familiar to me and would be to uh, other folks of at least. Caribbean descent in terms of the way people were speaking to each other and the things that the small interactions and looks that were going in between people when you saw the the thing put together how how well represented did people feel kind of like Andrea said um, when Charles actually came into the community at first uh, it was a shock to all of us but um, after a few weeks of you know talking to him and hearing his voice, how he related to us. He was so welcomed into the community to a point where we felt extremely vulnerable to to express anything that was coming to our minds at the time. And uh, we were all young when the film was uh, in development and when they were shooting. So it was as if we were all looking up to him for all of his work that he was doing and we we're authentically ourselves. So first off, I want to say thank you to Charles and uh, in his memory, this film really does um, show the work that he did. It like in his lifetime, he spent a lot of time trying to uh, focus on black voices and showing their true authentic selves. And that's exactly what he did with this film. Um, we were all um, very touched watching the final product of the film. And it really did show that sense of community that was there in the Villa Ways. It was amazing. Thank you. While I was 
I've, this is the second time that I've seen the film. And while I was researching the gentrification projects and things that were going on in Toronto at the time, I came across an article talking about basically that Jane and Finch was next. And a quote in the article said about some protesters said, why such anger over a seemingly positive change, one that would benefit the protesters as much as anyone? And it made me wonder what changed for the better for the residents of Villaways that we saw since that project and since the film was being worked on. So after the relocation process and moving back into the Villaways community, there's been a few focus groups that have uh, been held to address those sorts of concerns and thoughts. And one thing that is very uh, prevalent in everybody's minds is that so much of our community has been stripped. In the new community, now about only 30% of the people who moved out have moved back in. And though we have embraced all of the new members of the community, there's been so many things that are lost like programming. When I was a kid, I learned how to build a computer and uh, I met all the other youth in the community through the Art Starts program and that community center at the top of the street. Um, I learned how to catch a snake in the creek. I, I learned all of these things from all of the members of the community who were um, bringing themselves forward to become one big family. I remember coming down the road and saying hi to everyone and helping others bring down their groceries and stuff like that. And all of those things have been lost in that new community. And it's just a, a, a testament to the fact that when a community is broken up, when they're brought back together, things will never be the same. And I feel like that is what is at the top of their minds in that community, voicing themselves, which I'm so proud of uh, my fellow Torontonians for seeing all of these changes and really standing up for themselves because we didn't know that this is where all of this would lead to. And though um, it does look better on the outside, the inside is still broken. Thank you. As far as the TCHC is concerned, I was wondering, have they ever been remorseful, responsive, held accountable in any way? Because this is not the first time that this kind of organization and developer relationship has resulted in this kind of thing. I'm thinking about Regent Park. I'm thinking as far back as Africville and many, many others across the country. So has there been any response from them or from other corporate entities since the film? Like I said before, there have been a few focus groups that were actually brought together from Tridel and TCHC um, meant to hear the voices of the community. And through one of those uh, focus groups, I had a conversation with the project manager um, to uh, create the new program in the sound amenity uh, within the building so that we could start a studio for our our youth, right? Have a program uh, kind of like what we had before for us to learn how to um, learn studio etiquette, learn how to engineer, record, and do all of these things because the Villaways community is very creative at heart. There's so many people who have so many different ideas and um, they just need a place to express those things. And uh, initially the the response was very positive. We had we had a lot of great movement going forward with it, but we're kind of at this halt right now where we're um, we we need to find funding and all sorts of things. But I personally am working towards uh, private investors and finding ways where we can supplement that income for that community space. So Tridel and TCHC have been making small uh small efforts to hear our voices but when it comes to the execution of it there's been very little movement very little action this question is uh for you andres as an, an artist myself i understand the power of voice 
poetry being my medium, but for you as a as a visual creator, what role do you see for film in furthering and continuing these kinds of movements and responses to relocation and gentrification in the city? Yeah, I feel like uh, poetry is an art form. In in this case, um, was was so so powerful. We we started I remember we started the whole process um I think Charles did um some kind of workshop at the National Film Board in in the Toronto office where um <clears throat> I think uh Francine and 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 uh and a few of uh of, of the kids came came by and uh and uh I remember telling me that he was really really paying attention to everybody and he could <clears throat> almost hear Francine hardly talk, you know, hardly express herself. And, 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 and I think that was one of the great exercises that we were able to, to, to achieve, to, to shape really Francine's uh, power of her voice through the film. And we did a, a lot of uh, emphasis in, in creating her arc and, and, and at the same time with, um, with LJ and Kamal and 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 the way that the art starts program really empowered everybody there and what was really the material coming out of everybody there was inspiring us in the edit room. It was it was a, a vessel for us to like, you know, come back the following the following morning and 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 trying new things. And, and one of the things that we wanted to do is, is not fall into the, you can say the traditional aspect of cutting on camera to these people talking. And we were trying to, to really play with the music and with the with the words and and with the music and and try to build these poetry moments through the film and and it was it was one of my greatest experiences and I I I, I can't thank him enough and I cannot thank uh you know Kamal and LJ and Francine and and Carlene and Crystal and everybody on art side and their dedication to every day to to be there and i only was able to to go to villa ways a couple of times but i spent years with charles you know crafting this and 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 as well as the i remember harry at the apollo studios and i think everybody involved was bringing something to elevate um any kind of art form within the film so I see it as a very powerful tool. I see it as a as a way of expression that uh, is uh, necessary in today's society, and you know it, it just reaches you in a different way, like a song can 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 do, or like a a, a, a piece of uh, poetry or or a book can do. You know, sometimes you keep thinking about that song or that book or that thing that you read way more than you if you hear in a different context. Well, it was exceptionally done. Thank you for that. Uh, your answer actually leads into maybe my final question. Over the course of the film, we watch Francine find her voice in multiple ways. And I'm curious as to, to what degree this experience has created other interests in activism in the people in the community because once you find your voice and realize what you're passionate about, you often realize how interconnected other struggles are. So I'm just wondering for both of you and what you know of other members in the community, has this spread into other areas of life? Uh, I noticed that after seeing the film, a lot of our community members really gather together to um, have a collective mind towards these types of things. We've all been affected um, on different levels um, through this experience. And some of us were relocated to um, quote unquote worse areas where there was a lot of gun violence, a lot of 
you know, just harder circumstances than we uh, had faced in our very tight knit community. And um, just pointing back to towards gun violence, there was actually a, a, um, a community event that was put together by Serena Officer and uh, her organization towards um, like stopping gun violence in the Toronto uh, areas. And me, myself and a few other community members had attended and it was amazing. It really did help us uh, feel heard. It made us feel as if there was a place to have a voice about these things that were happening, not only towards gentrification, but towards uh, the black communities uh, in Toronto and how we're being affected by all of these different things. And I can definitely say without a doubt that our community has opened our eyes through this experience to all of the, all of the things that a, a true community protects you from and what we need to do to bring that back so that not only our small community feels together, but we feel together with the, with the whole of Toronto. I can say that, you know, in this case too, is like, it's, it's not just like, you know, being part of a film or making a film. I feel like, and, and Charles, you know, he kind of like also taught us too how to really, you know, really get involved. And, and it doesn't end when you finish your job and you move on to the next, you know, you really, you know, you really have to be involved in, 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 and for example, you know, like I, I keep writing with Francine, you know, and I can probably, I, I probably met her like, you know, five times, you know, and I see Kamal here, like, I, I don't know, a few times through the years. And I know that, you know, every time maybe we have an interaction, I, I truly, you know, it's like, it's, it's a different, it's a different involvement, you know, it's like, we want to, we want to change someone else's life and we want to make a change and we want to be involved and and it doesn't end there and and i remember every every morning before we started our session with charles you know he would talk to everybody involved in the film till like 2 a.m the night before he would start he would stay on the phone with carlene talking about things and and how to change other aspects of it or what will happen after you know we we knew that this, you know, this is not the end, you know? So I am so, so blessed to be a part of this community and, and somehow, you know, add my grain of salt from where I can, you know? So yeah, I uh, I thank you guys too, to program this film tonight and, and spread it as much as we can. Charles and the entire team were so open the entire time. As Andreas mentioned, he, Charles would come in and he would just say, how's your day going? How was your week? Um, have you written anything? What type of uh, stuff has been going on in your lives? And, and it really made him feel like a friend, you know, rather than somebody who's filming me, rather than somebody I'm trying to work for and and help uh, this specific project. It was as if it's our project. It's it's everyone's, and he really helped all of us individually feel confident in ourselves, in the work that we were doing, and really validating everything that we were doing and helping us move forward through that. And even if we had to take, I don't know, 80 takes of a song, it's like, you got it the next one, you got it the next one. And, and everything he did was just so supportive. I can't, it's hard to articulate, um, but um, it was just such a heartwarming experience uh, to be outside of your home, outside of your community, brought somewhere else and feeling like you're still at home. You're still somewhere where people are there to support you and just be a part of your journey, even though also they're they're a part of theirs. And and I wanted to do everything I could to support Charles because I felt so so welcomed by him. I 
I that brings me back to the first screening. Um, I remember I got there maybe maybe five minutes late because I was waiting for my family to come in, and we went and we sat on the balcony, and I said I had to go. I had to go meet the other members downstairs. And uh, when I sat with everyone, there were so many moments when I was brought to tears just by looking at the community and and seeing those shots of the gutters and and the park and all of those places that we used to spend so much time together. And I would look to my sides and they were crying too. And and after the film, we all just had our individual conversations with each other and we were just mind blown from how far we come from watching the film to where we were that day. And every single time a screening comes by and some any of the members come by and we're just there talking about, oh my gosh, look how far we've come now. And then now how far we've come and then now how far we've come. It, it just solidifies our confidence in ourselves. And I hope that really, that that gets to the heart of your question where we acknowledge how much we put into that, those moments authentically and looking at that from in the future, looking back, it just makes you feel this sense of, I don't want to say, I don't want to say pride. It's, it's more like just true happiness to see that, through all of that chaos, all of the all the things that people would say, you know, that's a uh, a bad community, that's this and that, and we're looking at it like that was our home. Those are our people. Those are, you know, our families. And to look at each other today, we're just so over the moon to see how far we continue to to keep pushing. And and yes, it does does it just solidifies our confidence and makes us feel as if we are heard we're we're truly who we are and we're just working every day to be better people i i may add if you don't mind um that um yeah i second i second come on on that night you know the night that um the film was shown for the first time i remember the the energy in the room in the room and i remember uh, also, Charles, you know, got very, very emotional. As a, as a filmmaker, when you show your film to your to the individuals that you portrayed in the film, and they are happy, okay with it, and they feel represented, I feel like that that sense of accomplishment and and that feeling, you know. Um, it was it was very very powerful and and when we watch the the raw material when Francine kept trying in the recording room and then she finally was able to to say those words in the microphone Francine's movement in the film is very very like if you think about it it's, it's not that big it's, it's like it's her finding her voice but just to to accomplish that in the way that we were able to to build that, I I I feel like um, every time we heard them speaking, I remember even Kamal. Maybe you like you know like you went up to you know to Mike Mike Clotman, which is the cinematographer, and and kudos to him and Charles, you know, because like they were. It seemed like they were part of it, you know, and 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 capturing those dialogues with 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 everybody and 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 shaping it then into a ninety minute film. Um, it was a labor of love. It was a labor of love, and 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 Charles loved kids and and loved the communities and and giving voices to to everybody. She's actually um, still working on her arts um, in small ways, small ways. You know, it took a lot for her to, um, you know, be in front of everybody. She's she's not a very, um, 
uh, extroverted person, uh, and especially after the breaking up of the community where she felt so, um, so welcomed and so at home, uh, it was uh, it was difficult to find that voice in other places. But she also did find herself, and she takes that voice everywhere she goes. So after the film, uh, she went into uh, uh, arts high school and. Uh, I actually just got uh, her contact a few days ago um, because I actually just got a new phone last month. And now I'm actually, uh, I just sent her a message uh, the day that I got it. So I'm just waiting to hear from her and see how she's doing today.